We are down at Frankie's Free Range Meat. It's a bit late today, around 3 p.m. I was working earlier, doing stuff for YouTube, stuff for my business, and these guys have been down here packing orders since about 7 a.m. Main perk of having an actual facility is a lot less grunt work. So, you know, we have the pallet loaded up with all the orders instead of hand trucking, you know, three to four over at once. So here's a pallet, UPS guy is loading the truck. They got another pallet here with more orders. And we got some pretty large orders here. This is probably four to five hundred dollars at least. A bunch of stuff still everywhere. We have a commercial fridge that we're gonna get installed. What oh, was that? Uh, is that a better option than the walk-in? No, that's left over from uh, Peter. He left that here. Yeah. He never saw this morning. All right, we got a free I mean, fridge. I mean, he charged us for it. What? It's, what do you mean? It's 59 degrees. That's why he didn't charge us for it. Uh, it doesn't work. I'm holding a Colaterra de Lisi in there. Oh, okay. It's just storage right now. It's not even refrigerated. There's no meat in there. Yeah. We got some more cod liver in from Brooklyn Imports. It's really loud in here. You guys can still hear that, but it was much louder previously. Not nearly as bad. So we have a bunch of shelves in the freezer now. It's still a bit of a mess because we have most of the meat at the other facility still. You know, we're still cutting steaks. They're still packing things up there. Uh, we just take the stuff over here to throw orders on the day of. Uh, this is just a bunch of Finlandia butter we have for you guys that uh, it's good for cooking. Overall, we're happy with the facility, how things are going, our website, our inventory. Now, every month we're making a lot of progress and building this into a business we're really proud and happy of. Uh, but let's talk to Adam. Let's get like the whole story on the contractor situation. And we'll also talk about how our website got hacked two weeks ago and I was up all night for like three days fixing it. You want to you give them the whole story on the contractor situation? We never updated them. Everyone's asking. I am a broken man. It, it, uh, on top of what happened the other week with the website being hacked. I'll oh talk my about God. that I, one. That, that actually to me is more amazing. This, this company is not a small company. They're a logistics and inventory company for multi-million dollar businesses. And they crippled our website, cost, costing us thousands of dollars in sales over the course of several days. And the response has been totally lackluster. So, I think they had an inside man that didn't like me. That's I, the only explanation. I don't like to ride on those trains, but to be honest, you go with the thing that's more likely. Are we the only company that they that they just randomly permanently deleted over 60 items Th from? That's the only real reasonable possibility. I mean, come on, that's, that is a bigger coincidence than someone was like. Someone told me that was the possibility with the contractor too. So we started with the, what was it? The $27,000 contract. What was the initial contract for? 30, 38. Yeah, so the guy came in really low, said he could do the job for 38,000. And then he kind of held us hostage, right? Yeah, the so the, 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 the big point that I want to make is the most important thing was for us to get a freezer up and running. So yeah, you don't pay a contractor until the job is completed, right? But what if I'm sitting here with a hot box and he's saying if I give him another $10,000, he'll have the box up and running. To me, that's kind of a no-brainer. Um, we got quoted a lot higher from the other guys too. And it's, yeah, it's not like it was out of the ballpark of reason. It's just the, the thing that's so frustrating is that we agreed to something and it didn't fall through. But the point is, is that if I hadn't done what I needed to do, we wouldn't have had a freezer. I mean, the business basically would have closed because our other facility couldn't support what we were doing. We didn't speak to any lawyers yet. I'm gonna to try to give some lawyers a call next week. Uh, I don't know about the people's court stuff. And even if we did speak to a lawyer, I don't know if it's worth it at all what the likelihood of even collecting money from this guy is. Uh, but he was just writing up new contracts every every week, basically. He, yeah, and then he brought a new one when the police arrived. It was a whole brand new one that I hadn't even seen yet. Um, and he, he, would, he would get torn apart in court, but then the question is, can we even get money from him? What was this, like two weeks ago? Two, two weeks yeah, Friday. Two weeks ago, Friday. no, it must have been Thursday night because I was doing a live stream. And yeah, someone on the live stream commented, Frank, what happened to all the products on, on the Frankie's Free Range Meat website? And I was like, what do you mean? We have beef liver in stock. And you know, I let the live stream go for a little bit and I, I checked my emails real quick and some more people on the live stream were asking me where the products went. So I said, hold on a second. I go on the Frankie Sea Range Meat website, I go to the admin panel and half of the products are gone. 
So I like, I kind of flipped out. I ended the live stream quickly and I called up Adam and I was like, what's going on? And he had no idea what was going on either. No. And then I'm freaking out because Frankie's like, where are all the products? What, what did you do? What did you do? Tell me what you did. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. We loaded up. I start swearing and screaming at Frankie. No, I don't know what's so, going so this on. is what happened. So we were screaming at each other on the phone because I remember that he talked about Kyozu to do the inventory. And I was like, we didn't give them store access. So I was kind of screaming at him like, how did, how did they get store access? They don't have store access. They don't have access to our, our webpage, our development or anything. Right. And just by installing the app, for some reason on WordPress, they were able to go into our store and delete the products. So we don't know if there was an inside man at Kyozu, which is a K-Y-O-Z-O-U. It's like this, what is it? It's, it's a Canadian inventory logistics and um, shipping company. So what probably happened was a vegan over at Kyozu went on our website, deleted literally half of our products and it was probably 80 products and descriptions, inventory, pricing, pictures, reviews, all of that stuff was completely deleted. Forever. Yeah, from a, from a web development perspective, that would cost probably $10,000 to fix. Uh, plus our, all the lost sales, and then, and then plus their official opinion is that the app was not able to do what happened. Because when, when I asked them how, why are you deleting products, they said it's not our on our end because that's not possible. But luckily Shopify logged who had deleted them and when. That was our only proof that they had even done it. Yeah. So on the Shopify log, there was Kyozu deleted, you know, just a whole list of products. I kind of went down the list, recorded what was missing, and I was I was awake all night for like three nights just getting the the products back up like one night i got all the products up with the picture the next night i did all the descriptions so you know 20 30 hours of work just grunt work on the computer you know it wasn't the end of the world but if i had to pay a web developer to do that if i didn't know how to do that myself uh we would have been in in, in definitely in a, in a bad situation and thankfully the reviews were saved on the uh the review program so we did have the reviews Good. so the only thing we lost was the sales data which is the sales data is really important. Um, do, do we need it? No, but now all our sales are completely messed up. I think, I think we could still look at the sales on the, on the big spreadsheet, but now when we go to an individual product, we don't know really how much of it we sold over, over what period of time, at least moving forward. Now we have to combine two. So, uh, you know, between that contractor scamming us, uh, I mean, just Frankie Strange in general has been a lot of problems. The, the first big one was getting taken down on Kickstarter. That should have been a warning to both of us that yeah. this is a bad idea. <laughs> I got that call, phone call too from Frankie. They're suspending the account. Like, and what's going on here? Yeah, like, yes. Oh, we have to keep scrambling. Yeah, it, um, it's... I don't want to work with anyone anymore. I, I can't trust anybody. No, we can't. So the Kickstarter was taken down last year when we started for $40,000 and then we had to relaunch the website and th things have been very difficult. You know, we had uh, the shipping problems with the initial orders. I think, what did we lose? Half the, US, half the orders. That was USPS. Yeah, we shipped uh, USPS, first round of orders. We lost about $15,000. We didn't make any money from our first batch of the Kickstarter money. Or what would be the Kickstarter money? Just the initial fundraiser money for the orders. Uh, and it's pre-orders. You know, a lot of these companies, they'll do a Kickstarter, they'll take money for free. We didn't do that. We, we sold the product. Uh, so we did that. And then pretty rocky sourcing products, getting things going for about a year. And then we finally get in this new facility like six months later than we're supposed to. And, and you guys here in the background, we got a giant buzzing noise that we have to deal with all day. Uh, it's better though. Yeah, it, it's not as loud as it was. Um, you know, we have a halfway working facility, but you know, we're making continual progress and hopefully, you know, a, another year or two from now, we'll be you know, on a farm with a, a fully up and running nice butcher facility and uh, we're already doing things that no one else is doing. We already have a better quality product, more variety of products. And moving forward, we're really looking forward to, uh, especially the next few months, launching some more things and just making that continual progress. We filled over 10,000 orders. That's what I'm I was, going, well, going no, well, I didn't say that yet because technically speaking, it's like 9,200. We're getting close to 10,000. Right. We're close. Okay, okay. 
because it starts at it's, 1, it's 10, 000, but some of those orders were never sent right cancellation yeah i think we're at like nine thousand two hundred orders total on frankie syringe meat so it's a lot of high quality meat yeah it's a lot of orders not a lot of money made but we're looking forward to <laughs> to eventually getting to that point it's nice so this is the bag we're using for the whey protein right now we're going to get a label on here soon it's going to be frankie's free range whey protein we'll have that grass fed for you guys good survival food good overall for just uh protein and there's another company that i told you was selling raw grass-fed whey on amazon but raw and grass-fed marketing is is very non-specific so you're telling me out of all the sources we've looked through, there's no real grass-fed whey in america if it's american grass-fed raw it's grass-fed it's not grass-fed i think we found the only reasonably priced new zealand milk producer that makes whey protein so if it's u.s stuff it's probably not grass-fed with our sourcing of product nothing is ever as good as it seems so if they're making raw grass-fed whey in wisconsin or wherever what temperature are they actually doing the whey at even if it is a legitimate raw temperature the amount of whey that you need to make whey protein especially grass-fed if it's in the united states it's definitely not agrochemical free. They're probably feeding the cows corn silage. I would be very skeptical, and especially in a place like Wisconsin or upper United States, how they're making that much whey. Because in the winter, there's no way they're only feeding those cows hay. It's, it's probably corn silage and a bunch of other stuff. So we know with the New Zealand stuff, it's a really safe bet that it's 100% grass fed. And who knows, maybe sometime in the future we'll have some type of operation uh, where we're more in control ourselves, but uh, things are panning out. We're trying to get more products. So we're trying to source honey, and I want to hear the story from Adam. So you met a guy named Ashley. All right, he's he's in California. He ships honey all over the world. He's like a honey distributor, but he's like a specialty guy. His name's Ashley. He's Indian. Uh, I've spoken to him on the phone a couple of times. He is he like talk really fast and you can't understand what he's saying. Really, really slow. Oh, slow. It's like a it's a slow cadence, but the words are fast. I see. It's still, he still has that quick Indian cadence. Anyway, he, um, he found us, he thought we wanted high fructose honey. So he found literally the highest fructose honey that you can find. And it turns out it's from cotton. So they have hives that are dedicated to pollinating cotton fields. The honey those bees produce is the highest fructose honey that you can buy. Let's give some people some liver failure, right? I guess, yeah, I mean, he's, he also said it's dirt cheap. So if anyone wants some <laughs> super high fructose honey, cotton seed. We could single-handedly give everyone in the United States fatty liver with high fructose cotton seed Indian honey, possibly. So for the past hour or so, me and Adam have been trying to figure out what the next course of action is. And as opposed to a West Coast shipping hub, we're kind of thinking dairy farm and eggs we get a loan and then we can build our own state-of-the-art poacher facility, right? That's making the most sense? That's checking the most boxes. It's a big undertaking, but makes the most sense. Then we can get dairy, chickens, fresh local beef, control the supply chain, because right now I'm getting screwed ordering. That's where all the bottlenecks are. Because we're getting you guys fresh local beef, it's just we're not making money on it. Oh yeah, and if I do, if I have someone else process the beef, they make all the money on the processing. Yeah. And then I'd have to charge you $20 a pound for grass-fed local beef. We're, we're just not able to do it in a large enough volume right now. It's too much. Yeah. So we got a pretty good game plan moving forward. And even right now, we're still offering, you know, a higher variety of products at a better price than pretty much every single other vendor online. Uh, so you guys can go to frankeastrangemeat.com, see what we have. All the cheeses are in stock. Uh, we're going to try to get you know one or two more beef items that will be up by today. And I'm really looking forward to the next few months. It just seems like you know things get more and more and more delayed. And you know on paper you want to get stuff done within a month or two, but reality and dealing with other businesses it just doesn't work like that. Thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, if you could please like the video, leave a comment down below, and above all if you can share the video on social media. I'll see you guys for tomorrow's video.